I wait? Episode number what, Joe? 56? Yes. Episode number 67 <laughs> of the Optic Podcast. Hey, We're all very energetic today. Good right, morning. Big Good morning. Good <laughs> morning. Uh, today we have a very, very special guest, a uh, longtime friend, uh, goes way, 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 way back, uh, Corey Dunn. Corey has done, no pun intended, an amazing job of being in every single aspect of esports since the beginning of his career. Uh, he's he's broadcasted, and you'll, you'll understand why he has broadcasted in a little bit. Uh, he's done all the production. He's done the, any other jobs that you held? During the, oh, Jack's also here. Hey, guys. Whose phone was just, who phone just rang like that? I don't know why. You, oh shit! Deals that wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was anyway, so Jackie nice. boy, welcome. To, Hello. To yet another part. Why? Why are we wearing these helmets, uh, uh, Corey? Yeah. So we're actually on a construction site now. So it is just, and actually, it's for all your safety and the, you know, you know. So we're making sure everybody's good. So. Okay. So where are we? Give us a little rundown of of where we're at right now. Obviously, they can't see the whole thing. Uh, I've actually just uploaded a a tour of this place on my on my channel. You should go check it out. In the meantime, go ahead and hit me. Where, where are we at? So right now we're in the gamer gallery. So this is a space where we want to have players come on a regular basis, especially during like big, huge live events and whatnot. So uh, it's a really active space. Then we saw before it was the competition showroom, which seats about 2,500 uh, plus people in that space. How big is the stage? Tell them. Get them. Tell them. Yeah, so get them excited. So this is one of those things that, I, that really does get me excited for all the different types of events and stuff that I've worked. 85 feet wide um yeah so it's it's gonna be able to support all the big types of tournaments maybe not battle royales and things like that um but we're, we're talking through we're figuring it out let's 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 be honest we're so are, are you telling me that on this 85 foot stage with an 85 foot led the biggest led monitor screen whatever you want to call it across all of esports in the history of esports Bigger than Jerry Jones's. Well, yeah, we took, it. We, we took it. We took it. We took it from. We took eighty-five feet from the hundred-foot thing that he has. So now it's just a little. We're like just just a little little We there. say, "Hey, Jerry, Jerry, let us get, let us borrow that real quick uh, to do this." Um, you could. I, I saw it just now, and you can literally have a concert. And now that Drake has stepped into the space through the Hundred Thieves investment, Drake. I think now more than ever we have an opportunity to get him to perform for an esports audience. It, it, um, yeah, Ooh, that's the first thing I thought when I saw the, the, this place. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I thought Drake should come perform here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's actually not not at the AT and T yeah. Arena, which is like a, a stone's throw away from here, the Texas Rangers Stadium. Either no, but yeah. I uh, I'll tell you, I couldn't believe. I mean, we we've been to so many arenas now in general, where it's the MLG Arena, the Esports Arena in Vegas, the the uh, esports arena in you know Southern California. You've got the Gfinity Arena. I are, mean, are you saying Irina? Arena? Arena. Got it. Got it. Oh, is he making fun Mario? of Mario? Yeah, Mario. I say Mario. Arena. Yeah, well, I've known Mario. That for a while. Yeah, Mario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But either way, this place is ups- huge. Like it's, I can't believe the size of the of this venue. Yeah, one of the things that I, so I was told that we were taking over a convention center, which I thought was that's that's a crazy idea. Yeah. I don't know why we're doing it. And then I showed up here, and it just made sense. I mean, the flow, the feel. I mean, it it does scream stadium. And so I I'm a huge advocate. I believe in it now, um, and I've been working on this project now for about six months. And I mean, this this has been my baby for since day one. So it's not just the ground hall or the grand hall like this area here. It's taken over the entire convention center so we're be able to leverage so think about some of the bigger events like dream hacks or some other types yep. of components yep. that, that or mlg with the open tournament stuff so yep. having 240 competitors over on the other side while having the main competition over here that's all possible you think about like the the feature stage uh, that used to happen for or that happens for the mlg this right here where we're standing right now or we're sitting right now is exactly where the feature stage could happen while the main stage has the other stuff going on. So this has got right next to us where we're at. This is a large LED right here too. So yeah. we took the rest, that 85% that we took from Jerry, yeah. we took, took another like 15 from him as yeah. well. We're obviously joking on that, guys. Okay, we didn't steal anything <laughs> from Jerry Jones. He owns Texas. So um, for, for me, I like the location because of what's happening with Texas Live. Um, if you picture a, a nice little... This is why this is why I often say that Texas is the 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 state for esports because, you know, they're not just saying it. They're 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 putting things in place to really really make it happen. Uh, if you were to tell me ten years ago, well, I was one of the 
seven people watching Big Timer dominate the competition at MLG. There was like I was one 10 of those or well. 11. 10 or 11. Yeah. That's all I'm short. That's, that's a 50% yeah. difference right yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, he's right. It was like 15 to 20. Uh, seven of those were us, though. Big, uh, you know, Diesel and everybody else. If you would have told me that, that there, there was going to be a place designated strictly for esports events and then as a byproduct of the space that we have offer it up for other sort of events then i would have been like that's crazy because typically you know events are set for event venues are set for a specific thing right. and esports as a side thing but this being you know primarily an esports thing an esports hangout an esports destination across the united states nasty love it i think more people are going to show up here than Across the street, you guys can't see it, but yeah, the Texas Rangers stadium is. Yeah, we can see it right here, right there, man. We can yep. see uh, AT uh, AT and T. Yep. The the dome. What's it called? The dome. The AT and T stadium. The AT and T stadium is. And Globe I can Life see Park it right across the way. Right who, there. Who plays? The Dallas the Cowboys. They're like who a is that? Again? They're, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they're, so they're an esports team. <laughs> they play in Arlington at the those. That yeah, that's that's the they crazy practice part it, for They practice in Frisco, they but they play in Arlington. But they're called Dallas Cowboys. That's right. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so so as I was saying, I I think to to answer your question, whether or not I think that more people are going to be visiting here than they are across the street for the baseball parks, I, I think that if anything, it offers up a very a very peculiar, if you may, opportunity for for fans that are both fans of esports. If their parents are like, all right, let's go watch a baseball game, dad and mom can chill back while you know kid and cousins can meet up with their friends from school right here, Absolutely. and they can just you know shuttle back and forth. You know, and, and and I don't. I just made that. I don't know if there's shuttles service. There is shuttles. Yeah. There so is? there's there's uh, yeah. There's also like Arlington's doing a lot of crazy stuff. They even got Drive AI. So they actually driving around this area right now is uh, some AI vehicles. And so I mean, they're thinking through all the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Will space? <laughs> Will. Is that who I saw on the way in? <laughs> yeah. They so, gotta cut me off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's cool though. You you mentioned about. Uh, Traditionally, esports steps into big arenas, things like that, that yeah. already exist, or convention halls. Yeah. This is built for esports. Correct. And so broadcast, whether it's competition stage, like everything is built for it because we want to have more esports. And so we want to make it easier. So all those load-in days, right? Jack, we remember those load-in days of having to see everything being built out, the bringing the entire crew. I mean, the costs and the expenses and the, the, the unknown, unseen things that you come up in the beginning. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that. It's already done. Yeah, so having worked at MLG and ESL and all these mm -hmm. other um, tournament organizers that you have, how say let's say MLG Columbus was uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. When would you guys have to come in to start setting the venue up? So typically MLG gets in on Monday. Oh, and my they, God. And they leave on Monday. Yeah, for like a major LAN event, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, the MLG arena is a little bit the different. MLG arena is definitely ML different. MLG arena is obviously yeah. different. But, yeah, no, those events, it's like – I mean, people, people, that's exactly it. And they have to tear it down within 12 hours. So, like, Correct. people who just did all that for the week, the event ends. I mean, if you've been to an MLG, it's like the security ushers everyone out of the finals, like, instantly. Yeah. And as you're, like, leaving the venue, like, looking back at the stage, like, wow, that was a great finals four minutes ago. They're already cleaning up the chairs. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, even that's not a lot of time. A week to set up yeah. an event on well, that. Well, that's not yeah. even a week. It's right? three days. Because you, you got four days of that as competition. Right, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's, I mean, it flies. Yeah. But, but for them to break it down within the first three hours after the, the you know, the competition started, yeah. and I've seen, I've looked back and seen Bobby Morris over there hanging from the oh, rafters, yeah. just yep. unscrewing stuff yeah. with his hands, yeah. you know. Uh, it, it's, it's nuts, man. But, and, and to think, like, how, how, big is, how big is Adam's team, uh, Adam Epsilon, like, is, is well, his I mean, crew? The Columbus office itself is, like, 12, 15 people, I think. Yep. That's... Um, but yeah, but they're a great crew. I mean, they've got a great, oh, yeah. great, uh, a lot of people that are really efficient what they do. But the the thing is, like, Collegiate Rocket League's happening here. Yeah, uh, they're only taking one day. What is Collegiate Rocket uh, Rocket Rock so, League? So Rocket League right now is they're leveraging all the different colleges around. So they built a conference, which is fascinating to me. As I was watching their online viewership, yeah. you'd think a collegiate thing would be maybe a couple thousand on yeah. Twitch. They're averaging between twenty to thirty thousand on Twitch right now That's for their insane. online league. So are they offering like scholarships? Based yeah, so on this? in the end, yeah, we're they're, we're working through some stuff right now. So the winners will get a, a significant scholarship at at the end of the the tournament. So that's working with Psionix on their collegiate rocket league. I peaked too soon, man. I peaked too soon, dude. It's got to be crazy from your perspective both. because <laughs> you were kind of you competed up until right when the arenas I feel like started to get built. Like you never competed at the MLG arena in Columbus, right? Right. Yeah, I coached the uh, Halo team one time, but that was it. Uh, uh, yeah, so that, it, that it's got to be crazy to see like things like this can now just be established and stick around. It is. Yep. 
Well, one of the things I was going to ask too, I mean, for you guys, being able to compete and play, but getting to the venue beforehand, already have, we have eight team rooms that are back here that are yep. all set up, networked, land, ready to go. that are all isolated, so if you want to, you can draw on the dry erase board, come up with some ideas if you wanted. I can't I, believe that. I remember MLG Nats in 09, we were trying to warm up on the feature stage, or no, it was, uh, it was Fear and Envious. They were playing, and they were taking way too long on a sabotage match, and they were threatening us, saying we weren't going to get to play on the main stage unless they hurried up. Yeah, so your top eights all have designated rooms. Okay. So you're, whenever you make the top eight in those final couple days, yeah. you've got your own room. If you want to scrim beforehand, you can do that. That's I mean, It's super all good. set up for you. That's super, super good. Even ready for Call of Duty 5-on-5 five five as well. So, Awesome. Yeah. What do you think about that? You, I mean, you've obviously been a, a, a huge fan of Counter-Strike. You, you're, is that where you started your career in Counter-Strike yep. Source? So, yeah. Oh, no. no, no, no 1.6? Well, even further back than that. Hit me. So I started casting That's how I set you up. Yeah, you know, already good know job. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, I, started <laughs> I started in 2004 in Dallas. So I uh, went to the, uh, what used to be called the CPL. So I did CPL winner. I was 18 years old. So, Jack, I, you know, I've heard your story. I thought it was great. Uh, very similar in that fashion where kind of growing up and finding my way, did stuff for free, put that time out there. But I casted Counter Strike 1.3. Mm -hmm. um, been playing that game. I didn't even know it was a thing. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you might hear like Counter Strike 1.6. Was 1. that on Xbox? No. no <laughs> Did they have sprint? You're hurting. That one? I'm gonna have, I might have to walk away. No, that's <laughs> no, totally joking. All my first person shooters always been on on uh, PC. Even right. even with Call of Duty, Call of Duty 2 played PC, Call of Duty 4 played on PC. So. Cool. So what do you think about this this transition now that we're going from from 4v4 to 5v5? Uh, I don't know. You, you knew that, obviously. Mm, absolutely. You, you're well into yep. it. So we pretty much met in the middle from casual and competitive. So, you know, as you know, up until this point, uh, casual gaming was 6v6 all the time and competitive was 4v4. And I need to know your, your point of view as well, having competed and being, you know, being considered the GOAT. You know, that's a debate about your your where you would rank. He had a he had a yeah. thread on the Cod Competitive Reddit the other yeah, day. Yeah, you did. Was like, did nobody link me this? <laughs> <laughs> where was it at? Who's about to get on his burner <laughs> account? I need, I need, He's I got need, on his burner account. He's like, Let me come. log in. Cod burner, and yeah. I'm gonna go correct these. I think people. somebody has like a list of like the average placings, and it just shows the amount of events that everyone's played, and it blows my mind how many more events people that I grew up with playing have played. Now. I think I was at 25. Land events that people like Seth or Cap or Pre. I mean, they're up in like the 70s, 80s. So, yeah, it was it was a long time ago. But to touch on the 4v4, 6v6 thing, I've been playing some 5v5 matches in Black Ops 4. It is insane. It's a completely different experience yeah. as 4v4. Yeah, I don't know if it's the maps. I think it's Black Ops 4, like just the speed of the characters. You're so much quicker. So you're about to get across like uh, Slums Hardpoint and five seconds from the spawn also there's no respawn delays so yeah. there's really no like back in the day black ops 2 hard point if you killed a team like say you got four down you had like a moment to breathe and set up and realize oh, okay they're spawning over here let's set up let's do this there's none of that anymore it's literally just five people rushing the hill over and over again whoever can like trade the most amount of kills that's who that's do who wins think, the game well, all right, so what do, you, what do you think about this, this transition to I, I mean, it, it, it comes down to I can speak more on the search and destroy side of it, especially whenever, whenever I was casting Black Ops 1. That was my, my bread and butter. Um, but for the CTF, other game modes, um, it's, it's going to be chaos, uh, which I think is good and bad. Um, it really comes down to you're going to have a lot more highlight moments, which I think is going to be epic. Right. Um, and then your search and destroy is going to be a little bit tougher. Um, your, your one versus fours, your one versus fives are going to happen. But your defenses are going to be your defenses are going to be so much stronger, yeah. right? Because one of the things with Call of Duty is you had to spread your defense thin every single time because you got two bomb sites, which means you have got two players probably playing on both sides, right. or you have to pull one off to watch mid or yeah, some type sometimes of connector. Be three so now one, you've yeah. got the whole right side of the team to be able to watch more of those choke points on the map. So I think search and destroy is going to be a little more methodical, but all the other game modes, I think it's going to be chaos. Well, right you just now, need a respawn delay. Yeah. Right okay. now, there's hard point search and destroy. Um, but there's no CTF in the game. Good. Uh, yeah, my apologies. Yeah, you. no, no. Like, the, like they don't. They, there's no public rule set yet of anything. Well, that's the other thing, and that's what I was. The, the, that was gonna be my question. Do you think that the reason that there was a spawn delay in in these previous game modes because there wasn't a fifth player on there, and now that there is a fifth player, is there a need for the the spawn well, delay no, to continue that, to happen, so or is it just because rules? Believe it or not, if you're watching this, believe it or not, up until this very moment, there have been zero competitive rules announced in the first event. The first com competition is in December. 
So these players are going to have maybe a month, if we get the announcement very soon here, uh, to, to start really competing. Karma's, Karma's competing in the Dorito Bowl, which I want to talk to you about yep. and, and, uh, about that. But, you know, th there's no need for anybody to practice with each other right now because there are no competitive rule sets. And, and the game will change, I guarantee, once these five players start playing in, in, the, in the round that they're going to be playing in in competition. Yeah, it's nuts that... Uh I mean, obviously, that's crazy, you know, six weeks out. I mean, it's not as dramatic. It, it always seems to happen some way in that capacity. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's just going to be it's going to be an entirely different ball game. I honestly forgot what I was going to bring up before then. What were we talking about? Uh, I was talking about um, 5v5 uh, and the respawn delay. The respawn delay. Oh, respawn delay, yes. Um, well, a lot of the respawn delay stuff that came on in kind of was kind of just put in to try to force that dead time that you were talking about, like, those jetpack games were so nuts. Like, if you right. think about an advanced warfare hardpoint, like AW, it was like you'd end a game and it was like, oh, the Zoom went 56 and 45. Yeah. 110 engagements in one game. Where yep. Black Ops 2, it was like a 40 bomb was like, right, it was like maybe mind. happened three times in the whole year. Yeah. There's just no penalty for dying anymore. Like, right. normally you'd have to really think about it. And if you went in and died, that hurt your team. But now it's just like, go in, you can die 50 times in a game. And as long as you're like getting those engagements, trading kills, you're good. That was always the hardest part for me whenever coming from a different type of game into Call of Duty was yeah. was that. Is <laughs> that you, you were rewarded for dying at some time. Right. Because you get new nades, new setup, everything. Exactly. You just hop back into the And it's the just action, keeping so. pressure on the team. I remember back in the day you roasting the Call of Duty pro community. I think even in search for like not having well, strategies. Course. You really helped like kind of mold the, the search I, and destroy. You don't, yeah, you don't have to state that. I, strategies back then. <laughs> <laughs> he I, did, shared, he, I shared it. I shared my, my viewpoints right. on it. Yeah. Uh, I have a DM from him. He's like, hey, has your team ever considered using smokes? <laughs> 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 in 2011. Remember, yeah. Yeah, and I'm yeah, yeah. like, I'm like, well, that was no, another, wait, that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was another discussion too going on recently because uh, I mean not only the goat the w will being the goat uh, discussion, uh, but also the, uh, the the talk of like some players were calling for snipers to be just removed from search and destroy, and I, one I think it's lame, but two the argument back is like, well there's they don't ban the sniper and counter strike, but it's like okay well also the sniper and counter strike because there's an economy based game correct yeah it costs. 150 like 1.5 times what any other weapon costs and you know there's that trade-off sort of thing mm -hmm. yeah. um and typically you know you can't you can't buy five of them well and you're and you're not yeah. rewarded either so yeah. like all the other weapons when you get kills you're rewarded with 300 dollars. so go and go back to the economy you only get 100 bucks for that yeah. when you get a kill with oh i didn't with know that yeah so it's i mean that that's exactly right i mean you're you're molding the game based off the economy not because of the weapon yep well did you ever really play counter-strike i played a little bit of counter-strike i was um what was like the eagle or Ellie? Oh, that's good. Ellie? Legendary eagle. Yeah, okay. That, well, yeah. On, on Xbox. Yeah, got to the, no. Yeah, no, he played. No, he it. played the one with the sprint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, dude, that that stuff never that, that never gets old. That that whole thing. The hitch thing. The hitch the hitch sprint thing. But then now it's just like even built into more of a meme because like you've obviously got more CS players trying out COD like Shroud now showing off his raw aim in the call like it's in incredible Call of Duty. man. It's just fun. Yeah, I, I think obviously the battle royale game that, that has been obviously implemented to this is the, is the right refresher the, the right refresher that we needed, and I'll tell you why. I haven't touched heist. I haven't touched r regular multiplayer since the game came out. I've and and zombies played. is crushing too, which is yeah. crazy. Zombies, is, you can argue that zombies has never been healthier. You can argue that it's crazy to think that for the first time ever, multiplayer is the least hype thing yeah. about the game. Yeah. And it's and, and I don't think it's bad because there's still a ton of hype for the multiplayer. Right. But I think the it's not that the multiplayer hype has died. It's like the multiplayer hype has gone from like here to like here. But the other hypes have gone from campaign right. from there to blackout, which is at the ceiling. Right. And then zombies, is, I think, went up. Like Noah yeah. posted his stats from the first two yeah, weeks. And it's like 200,000 subs and like 20 million views in the last 10 days. Yeah, it's yeah. insane. Just from... Just from uh, from zombies, zombies has always been like super, super popular, uh, and in my opinion, had they been given or had had the right amount of people been promoting it the way that the Noah Jays and the syndicates are doing it right now, the same sort of uh, the same sort of of gradual increase in viewership you would have seen on, on Twitch. Because right now, if you log in right now as you're watching this, I can guarantee you that the Call of Duty is either at the number one spot, depending on who's playing, or at the number two spot. Like it, we haven't seen that ever. I mean, think about World uh, World War Two. Last year, there was not even in the top fifteen. Call of Duty was no. Nah. World, World, World War Two wasn't even in the top forty. I yeah. think about that because no one, there's no incentive to watch pubs. I mean, I think I think now looking back on World War, I called it World War Two. It was like 
when you there was no reward. Did that like, year even happen? Like like think of think of right now with when you get a specialist or something and you get like a six piece with a with with an annihilator or you get a collat with a fifty cal sniper. Like there wasn't any of that hype right. in Call of Duty World War Two. Even snipers have more stuff to play than ever before. Like I don't know if you've seen, but like they've been using because now there's like high caliber one and high caliber two, and yeah. they like stack. People have been using the Mozu pistol with like a scope on it or the SDM, and those are one bullet headshots. So you'll have like this Magnum pistol, and like you're, if, you have, if you're super accurate, like you're just going like pah, pah, with like a six bullet clip, and it looks nuts when yeah. you watch people clip with it. So snipers have been using all sorts of like everyone's got something to be excited about, and there just wasn't that, for example, last year. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see what happens with Battle Royale specifically, simply because, again, it's brand new to the game. Uh, the genre is, is, is exploding, so it needed that sort of refresher. But uh, on, that, on that note, you're competing in the first uh, Battle Royale tournament globally, which well, yeah, is called Well, yeah, it's what? technically not a Call of Duty tournament, which I was told to say. Okay, um, but it is. But it, we'll see. You can't say it. I can say it because uh, I'm not participating. But, yeah, so it's the Doritos, it's, the Doritos Bowl TwitchCon. Uh, it's, it's pretty unique. Um, so from, from what I'm understanding, it, and obviously it's this weekend, but it's my team, which is myself, TP, Karma, and Hysteria. Uh, it's on PC. Then there's Shroud's team, there's Ninja's team, and there's Lupo's team. Uh, it's a $250,000 prize pool. Four teams playing, so everyone gets paid out in some way, which is dope. So even if you get last, I think it's like $6,200 a person or something. Nice. Um, first place is twenty five grand a person, so we're definitely obviously aiming for that. I think going in, people have us as like the front runners. Obviously, when you put TP and Karma on a team, even on PC, Karma, I would argue, Karma's is awesome. better at PC Blackout than console Blackout, which is just ridiculous. Uh, we basically pub stomp for four hours, um, and they fill, and it's like hour-long heats, I think. And then it's, I think it's custom servers where the rest of the players are live at TwitchCon. Oh, wow. So, like, we hop into servers, and it's like we just farm on the Twitch, TwitchCon fan, fans. Like, I love you, Ninja! <laughs> and then he sees him in River Town, he's like, <laughs> done. Wait, so what is the, uh, what's the format? Like, you guys all load it's like, into... It's like almost like Friday Fortnite. Okay. It's just go and get as many limbs as possible. Um, but you guys are all loading into the same yep, game? Yeah, same or? game, I think. Oh, wow. So it's like four squads in that game. Who can get the limbs? What we're thinking is like, well, what's the best strategy behind it? Do we drop 2-2? Two, two? Yeah. You know, do we have two people drop Rivertown, two people drop Firing Range? Are all the players going to play, like, scared? It's so like one, we, we played a couple of those, like, Friday Fortnite-esque tournaments so far, like Doc's Code Red. We played mm -hmm. in Hitch's first tournament. And, like, for those, it's like you want to go, you think, like, oh, let's land somewhere hot. Firing Range, Rivertown. Yeah. But we would land there, and there's maybe one team, and we think it's because people still haven't really got to win a lot in Blackout and don't have their confidence there, slash, like, they're still playing for that victory. So, like, let's land outskirts. Let's land at this unnamed place and try to stay alive. Yeah. So, like, we had, we were facing these people, and they'd land at, like, unnamed little towns and finish with nine kills because little Johnny27 and Jeffrey, they're scared to land where they think good people are going to be, which is Rivertown, Firing Range, Nuketown. Right. So those places are almost, it's, like, counterintuitive to what we'd think. Yeah. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering what the strat is, but it should be fun. Well, don't tell the strat if you know what the strat is. Uh, is there anything else that you're doing at TwitchCon, or is that just the... the uh, well, I just announced we're doing a meet-and-greet Friday. Uh, we're also doing... I'm casting Fortnite Friday and Sunday, and then Saturday is the Doritos Bowl. So I got a pack slate. Wait. Sunday is the, the what? So the, the Fortnite... Because there's a, there's a Twitch party that people are attending on the night before an actual big tournament. Oh, yeah. No, I'm going to be... Hung over. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, like, asking that at my stations for whatever this is, at the Doritos Bowl or Fortnite casting, that I have Pedialyte, Advil, and a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich with salt, pepper, and ketchup on ooh, an everything bagel. Ooh, I'm so hungry right now. You have no That's clue. That's rough. That, how, <laughs> that, that, that touched me. That touched <laughs> my me bad. Deep, deep inside. My bad. Um, so when is the grand opening for this, uh, for, for the for the eSports arena, and what are we hosting? Hosting something insane. Yeah, so for... Uh, our very first event that we're going to be doing here is FACED's uh, e ECS. Uh, it's going to be open on Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, so that's November 24th and 25th. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're doing Counter-Strike. It just worked out that way. It's not, not because I, I wanted it to be that no, way. No, of course, yeah. it, just, it just happened that way. Um, so it's going to be, it's going to be awesome, uh, the, the, especially uh, AT&T Stadium is going to be packed um, during Thanksgiving weekend because that's where uh, every, every year uh, they play at the Cowboy Stadium. Uh, so we're going to drive on a lot of that different types of traffic. And so we want to see everybody um, from all over uh, to be able to check out what we've done here and, and really be able to provide feedback. So one of the things I'm going to take from Adam Apicella's book, 
is communicating with the community on a regular basis. That's one of the reasons why MLG has become what it's become, is not because they thought they did it right and they you know, stayed behind and thought of their own ideas, it's because they reached out, they asked questions, and they constantly were being transparent. Yeah. Um, and that's what I would like to try to do as well. I think what Adam and them did a really good job of is like they're in Columbus, they've obviously got Ohio State, the surrounding areas, so they like try to leverage that community. You know, Same if you have here. an Ohio State student pass, you come on in. I could see it being like if you've got a Texas license, you know, yeah, you, so you get cheaper access here yeah, or something. Just down the road is uh, University of Texas at Arlington. Yeah. Um, and so they've got, just for reference for anyone, they won Heroes of the Dorm in 2015. Uh, so their esports club is regular, about 2,500 different uh, groups that are there. Uh, I went to the University of North Texas, which is up in Denton, which is roughly 45 minutes from here. Mm -hmm. uh, they have an esports club that won in Overwatch uh, at a recent event. Uh, SMU, which does the, the Guild Hall, which is a bunch of developers. They're re close by. So whenever you mentioned the very beginning about esports being here, mm -hmm. um, I say it originated here because yeah. um, of Quake and, and Counter-Strike and other games that happen here. Um, but even more so because of what we're doing from the college perspective and then also the, the teams that are here. Amen to that. And, yeah, look, I'm not calling anybody out, any other state or city out there, you know, saying that they're the, the esports destination. Yeah, be about it. Be about it if you're going to be talking Absolutely, about it. You know yep. what I'm saying, Big T? You got to make it happen, man. The uh, the college thing, that's a recent occurrence or that's been going on for a while, all these different like guilds and, and clubs so, and the colleges? Yeah, so SMU does done doing the guild hall for quite a while now. Really? Um, and it's a whole driving factor. I mean, we all know that gaming or electronics technology drives traffic, especially what all colleges care about is recruiting people. Sure. And so even UTA is looking at us and going, man, look what we got. Yeah. I mean, we're going to bring people here and say, look, we're right next to Esports Stadium Arlington. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So it's going to drive that traffic. The demographic is going to be, you know, it's, and our goal is this, this space is going to be open uh, every single day, um, not even just whenever we're doing events. So after ECS, this space will be open to the public and giving them the chance to be able to play their games and really be able to dictate. We've got a, a, a game plan ahead of us of what type of games we want to do, a league play yep. that's local here. But if we realize that that's not the right game or we get hundreds of suggestions that we want to do as other type of game type you know, game and game type, then let's do it. Yeah, that's just, what I was going to ask next is if you plan on doing anything in between the larger events or... Yeah, so we're planning on doing two uh, games every week that okay. happen on a regular basis, and then that leads up to a quarter finals, or our, our, our finals during a, each quarter. Mm -hmm. So our competition stage uh, that we're building out is fully turnkey. Uh, as we talked about earlier, Collegiate Rocket League comes in day uh, one day before, and then the show is the next day. Got it. And so that's exactly what we're going to be able to execute. So my background with producing and directing, we'll be producing and directing the show right here. So you get the chance to play here, and then after that, you get the chance to be able to step up on that 85-foot stage. So what you're saying, just to round it all up, is that if Mamu, the middle-aged men of Optic, wanted to, wanted to compete the against the, the original the Umu. Umu, old men of Optic, <laughs> I would, the stage I would take Mamu 30 out of 30 times. Yeah. How yeah. much you want to put on that, Jack? We're five and nine on GB right now. Just before you shake on that, but seven dollars, deal, perfect, it's done, big, it's done. One one low grade lunch. I think I got you. <laughs> I, think I got your happy meal. No 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 chips and drink. <laughs> kind of action. All right, just uh, just just so we can so we can keep on the on the conversation of the of the of the stadium. Um, what are some cool things that you guys haven't announced yet and you want to announce right now? I'm just kidding. What are some <laughs> of the things that you think that, uh, that, that are going to make, that makes this place different than any other place? Is there going to be lounges? Is there going to be a uh, bar area for adults to come in and, and, and congregate? Are we going to be able to watch not only Twitch moments or Twitch competitions, but are we also going to be able to see sporting events like the ones you see outside? Is it going to be an all-inclusive sort of experience for parents and kids and all ages alike? Or what are we... No, I think it's for us, it's about being flexible. So all the things that you mentioned can happen, but really what this space is all about, which is cool, is you, you guys saw it when you first drove up here, was Tesla has got their charging stations here. Yep. Um, I'm so, hooked up right now. So, uh, there you go. <laughs> so having this space, because what we see on a regular basis that there's cars out there charging. This is the only charging station in a long distance from here. So we're gonna have this space so people can come in there, check, you know, be able to watch and be able to get introduced to games. Yeah. Really be able to have internet, coffee, what have you. But then you mentioned about having uh, alcohol. Yes, I mean, you can't have what we do 
and being in esports <laughs> without having alcohol. I'm just uh, a little vodka soda with lime. I love one so right now. This is like the world I dreamed about living in 10 right. years ago, <laughs> and now it's like actually happening. It's, it's going to be incredible, man. Will would have been like, yeah, I'll be right there. Main stage <laughs> just calling. He's like, ah, Tito's soda he, just he, he got He would do one of these. Overplayed? <laughs> yeah, finishing the, the drink. <laughs> finishing the drink. Chugging it, finishing it. It's so good, man. Yeah, so I mean, the, from being able to run our own events, uh, being able to execute on all different games, one of the key things for me is I want this space to be agnostic, uh, game agnostic. So of course. Rocket League, Counter Strike, uh, whether it's Call of Duty, Blackout, uh, or Black Ops, or Fortnite. Um, any different type of genre, even fighting games. Uh, one of my counterparts in, the, in this is uh, huge in the fighting game community, so he'll be able to drive that. He'll be able to try to shape or work against that, that culture that's against esports, but really wants to be a part of something bigger. Yeah. Um, so we'll be able to drive that as well. Um, yeah, I mean, this space is built for esports, and that's from a key component that is competition and integrity, which is primary, number one for me, and then broadcast is second. And as far as the timeline, I heard these guys are working around the clock. You think just the Grand Hall here where the main stage is, is set to be finished in November? Or we're talking everything? November 19th. They everything, That's Olivia's birthday. Yeah, everything. Well, it's just a great day for all of yeah, us. Yeah, we're going to so. have a birthday party here. <laughs> There we've got go. a space for you. you we've go. got, we got the space. She's going to be really excited. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, so we're going to go to our stadium. <laughs> Let me show you the balloons that they got there. Uh, yeah. Now, is it, is it open to the public? Uh, how often is it going to be open? Like the stations that you're talking about having in here, is that – are we going to have some sort of, uh, you know, ca cafe, club mm -hmm. sort yeah, of thing? Yeah, that's what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah every so day. everything that – the space that we're in right now is going to be open uh, on a daily. Yeah. Uh, the competition showroom, we're probably in the first part. We'll leave the doors open. We want people to see what's in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Able to check it out, um, and probably have some Twitch streams or stuff. Being able to play in there, uh, just being be able to provide that energy. One of the other things too in this space, we saw how big it was, right? So twenty five, nineteen is roughly the number or the number of attendees. We yeah. can knock that down to a thousand. Not all games are created equal, and yeah. we knew that, yeah. right? So we want to make sure that, and we don't want to have some of those uh, tournaments that you see where there's open seats because yeah. they couldn't fill it out. Yeah, we'll know the beforehand, so we'll knock those size down. As oh, it awesome! Makes sense. So we're we're we're. Really You're mindful make sure. of, the, of the optics. So absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Very, very cool. I know a Twitch stream you could throw up on there. Who's that? Yeah, twitch.tv slash Courage JD. Oh. We love to I know play that guy. Fortnite Blackout. Now, is it Courage JD on, 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 on <laughs> actually, it's funny you ask that because it is on everything. I love this. It's like everything. It is on everything. Yeah. Uh, and to make it easy, too, CourageJDStore.com as well hosts all the newest merch. Buy your new hat and pop socket. I have a, I have a pop socket. I need a new okay. one. Yeah, I got you. Pop socket rocket. Everything. Will, when are we gonna get some some big timer merch, man? That's what I that's what I want to know. Soon. Are you doing a Red Dead playthrough? Um. Wow. That's this week, huh? That's, that's I, today. I thought you'd be like amped for it. So like it today? It's no, like it's the no, It's like Friday. Yeah, I think it's Friday. Yeah, most definitely. I'll be playing. I heard there's 65 hours of campaign. Of gameplay, just though. the story. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if I'm quite prepared is it, is after it a, these 14 hours. Is it a co-op thing or is it just a single? Uh, I think there's just single player. Is there not a co-op? I, I thought it was a license. Because look, if, if every every hero needs his side, man, and I could be yours, man. You down for a 65 down hour for a 65 campaign? Hour. No, no, no. A 65 hour campaign of just the story. But yeah. there is hundreds of hours of, of side missions. Like That's, I thought the 65 hours was including the side missions. We're talking just the no, main storyline. No, I heard line, Dude, if you look up, the, there's like the numbers of like the lines of dialogue of, right. of everything. It's like, if you add it up, like Jeez. the five other biggest games you can imagine, like GTA Five, the old Red Dead, Zelda, three other huge games, if you took all their lines of dialogue and put it together, it's not even what Red Dead is going to be. It's oh like a 105 goodness. gig download. I've never heard of that on console. I've played more games in the past two weeks than the last five years <laughs> combined. I don't know if I'm ready for this. I've been staying up till 3 a.m. playing GBs for Black Ops. Yeah, but you're having now fun. You're creating concept, but you're having fun. Oh, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Do, you have, do you have the itch to maybe come back? Do, how, what, do you think you'd be able to compete in this day and age if you, if you put your mind to it? I mean, we've been playing. Like I said, it's, it's a totally different game. I would yeah. need to see like the rule sets and stuff, but I've been snapping on them. <laughs> Dude, I would love to see you like, Bro, do like me tourneys and stuff, like at least online, like, yeah. even just to break No, of course online. I'll play stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I've, been, I've been playing Yeah, but you need them. a solid team. You should pair up with, with, with Ambos is nasty in S&D. Yeah. Yeah. And then I don't know who else, but that's it. Rambo. Could do. I've been playing with would Rambo, you, yeah. For example, like Vegas is the first event. Would I you was, go was, for a weekend in Vegas and, per, and and buy a team pass and play just to try well, it I was out. talking to Rambo about that last night. He's trying to figure out if he's even able to do that, obviously, working for, like, Sledgehammer. Because yeah. if I came back, I'd probably just want a team with, like, him and, like you said, Bose and Nature, two other. Nature would definitely do it, bro. You think he would play? 100%. 
thousand percent. I'd be totally down to go to Vegas. I'll coach. Was it December? December. Yeah, yeah. December. I think eighth through tenth. Oh, plenty of time. Yeah, to eight, yes. nine, ten. Plenty yeah. Of time. So we get into we we get into Las Vegas, uh, that Monday. Are we go, are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh. So so Whoa. Jack Jack has this very particular Whoa. opportunity because there's several casinos out there that are like begging him to come and stream out of out of his their location. Right. So I'm like, well, if you if you can work, why don't we just go for the for the week? I'll bring Jude, live, and we'll do. Like family things, Dude, and then we just we just and this is we it's not even been a month since we just did a, oh, he just did a week in Vegas. It's I the just worst four days. ever. The worst ever. Don't ever do a week oh, in Vegas. I, I mean, way too long. Oh, it's way, way, way too I think, long. I think four I'm days, not, three to four days is the longest you should be. I, in I Vegas. like to get there in the morning. I like to party all through the night, and I like to leave the following day. Yeah, I was going to say PM. one to two days. Dude, man, Hector, a, it was the long week for Hector. It's like the the last night was the Drake concert. And uh, my, my, or sorry, the McGregor fight was the McGregor fight was the McGregor fight, and McGregor fight ends and like me, Seth and Matt are still like in our, well Seth's just in our prime our, like, shirt in but our youth. We're, no, we're still like in our suits, like our, our <laughs> button downs, and everything. Hector had already gone upstairs and changed, and he comes back down, and we're like at the craps table, and Hector like throws some money out, loses it, throws some money out, loses it, throws some money out, loses it. And he just looks at us, he goes. Guys, I'm going to bed. <laughs> that was the last I saw of Hector yeah. on the trip. He's like, yeah. I'm done. It was good. Be, it was good. Good. Good hanging out. Yeah. But no, it, I had I had a lot of time and I and I broke. I think I broke like even. If not, I was probably down only from the bets that I made on McGregor. Um, but we we had a really good run at at uh, at craps on the craps table. Jack won some some professional poker player like thirty five to forty thousand dollars on one. Roll. I rolled for like forty five minutes, and this guy was just throwing money out like. They so knew cool. it was one of those guys that they knew. Like when they come up, they they didn't even have to ask like the, the card for the casino. They were just like, "Oh, it's him!" Like put him in. Um, you know his name, or yeah, they knew my name too. They, no, I, I didn't. We didn't know his one name, but like he, they were like, "Oh, he's got to leave to go to the." They were like, "Oh, he's got to cash now because he's got to go to the poker tournament." So like you guys have to give us a minute. We've got to color him out. And like basically, what happened was when I started my roll, he put a hundred dollars on the thirty to one odds that all the low numbers would hit. Mm -hmm. So that pays thirty to one. He put $100 on make it hit it all, which is 150 to one. And then he put another $100 on all the high numbers to hit all of those. So, like, if I hit every number, essentially, it would pay out 210 to one wow. on $300 like or across that. So, he did. It wound, it wound up hitting. Um, no chance. I rolled for 45 minutes straight. Like, I started with – we started with $100. We were up to, like, 300 and then I started to roll. And at the end of that, I had, like, 30 – Thirty one hundred or, or no, Sheesh. almost no, it was five thousand. Yeah, no, you I'd were five, away. I had fifty one hundred. We went to the McGregor yeah. fight. Wow. Um, and that guy walked away with like forty. G's, and that guy literally, bro, I mean, when when he hit the final number, Courage is like, "Come here, man!" So he we, walks we, around. We just ran and hugged each other. <laughs> yeah. And he, he he also, I had to hit ten for the final number for him to win everything. And he also had money on the hard, hard 10. ten. Yeah. So he won like ten to one, two hundred ten to one, and then like obviously whatever bets we had on the board itself, like he was raking in money from that. I think I. Now that looking back, I think it was like forty grand that he won straight up. They, the 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 staff because we had just we told them we had just that was the first time ever playing. I had never played craps. You said you were new to it as well. No, I mean sort of newish. I I play with a Duncan. Okay, yeah. um, but like they were like we see that type role like maybe once a week, and I was like, <laughs> oh dude, you, you gotta was, love like, the You had Matt going, I fucking love you, Jack. Yes. I love you. You know, you know how it gets like that. Yeah, he gets super wild. I, oh, yeah. So he no he no longer plays Matt. We're talking about Nate shot here. He no longer plays blackjack. Blackjack. Really? Yeah. He said, I hate blackjack. I I just rather put you know a hundred dollars on one number on roulette because I get a Dude. bigger thrill and win more money than than anything else. <laughs> and I was murdering it, bro. Like five different times that week, I would walk up to to uh, to a table and scream, Michael Jordan, put a hundred dollars down, thirty five hundred bucks, just Jesus. walking away. Na bro, nasty back to backs. I was. Out there, boom, walking away from Nate, I'll be like, I'll be like, yo, watch it, and it would hit. I'll be like, ah. <laughs> I can't believe he gave up blackjack though. It used to be the yeah, nah, not not anymore, not anymore. He we did have some bad experiences. I'll tell you right now, Will. You uh, there was times where we were all we were all playing roulette, and we'd be like this. Matt would be betting, we'd be like this. Am I seeing that right? <laughs> <laughs> like, woo, all right, Matt. It's oh, like, dude. You play for 15 minutes, you like, so how much are you usually? Okay, all right, let's go get lunch. Oh, man, the casino's a good time. <laughs> that casino Dude, is I the, the I, greatest I, time. I want to gamble with you once. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. it's it gets nasty. <laughs> yeah. So what 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 Nate did at the table, he usually does that, too. And I'm like, oh, my God. Even now, I'm, like, I'm still like, man, I'm not going to put that much out there, man, just in case. But Nate went down like three on the or 6,000 on the first night. Yeah. And then brought it all the way back, like, throughout the week. Whoa, brought it whoa, over. No, in his vlog, he, he was down 11,000. Yeah. 
and then brought it back to near even or, pl- yeah. or was positive for a bit and then we definitely ended down yeah he, everybody everybody the last up. time the mcgregor fight they rigged all the hotels to everyone lose like i'm pretty sure everyone lost everybody started brawling did you think you were gonna have to throw down there for Look, a second I, yeah i mean Being in the crowd because everybody said some dude bumped into me right. luckily he was from from ireland okay so i knew he was he, he could tell you were irish and he could tell that I'm three percent Absol- Irish, absolutely right, three percent <laughs> Irish. Uh, but yeah, no, no, I didn't think I was going to fight. But it was it was one of those scenarios where I knew that anybody can start swinging at anybody just for the wrong reasons. Yeah. So immediately before they even fight, you know, the fight even happened, I'm like, all right, we need to get out because people, you know, it's a fight. You know, people. Are- no, heck, the second the like we so just to set the tone like McGregor, you could tell was going to be gone, and literally the like Hector was like this, McGregor was. Hector's like go, like the, his, he wasn't finished with the tap, and Hector was like, really? start exiting, like start moving out. So we exit the row, and then we we turn away from the from the from the octagon, and we start walking up, and all of a sudden the crowd erupts. It's like yeah, you just hear it. And, and like, at that point, we're maybe 20, 25 feet away. Yeah, I I turn around and I see something happening. I'm like, I'm like whoa, whoa, something's happening, and then I get pushed. Right, and I turn around, this tiny little dude, and I'm just like, I'm like, what happened, man? You guys like? And then I'm like, I, we go upstairs, we go upstairs. And he was feeling good because Seth was next to him too. No, Seth yeah, was all the way. In the <laughs> These guys were three. Yeah. Okay, well, well, nervous Nate shot then kicked in. Yeah. You could tell Matt like shut like Matt went he into like shut down. Like I need to get us out of this mode, right? Yeah. Remember, remember, he found the stairway exit. And bro, it was like it was like it was a fake door. It was like no one else in the whole venue saw knew it. about it. And then Matt just is like. Opens this door, and I swear to God, you're like, what? It's a clear <laughs> stairwell with no one, no in, one it. in it. And then there's really? a door right to the outside, one story down. The, the thing there is that right before that, as soon as we exited the, the venue and we were like in the, in, on the belt of, 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 the, of the venue, mm-hmm. there was a fight. Like two dudes going at it. Those did you guys, upload I that saw your video? Yeah, I did. I did. Oh, so yeah. My man, Phil. The guy's name was Phil. Phil this yeah. bald. Had to be like forty-three year old dude, just like a grown ass. He was man. on top of him. He was dude. on top of him. He was about to end this dude's life, and the dude's like, blah, 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 blah. "I'm like, shut the fuck up! You're about to get your life ended. Don't say anything." When I I'm say recording. this dude, literally, the he was probably drinking, and then he, the the patience he had to hold the punt, like he knew so bad in his head, like if there was no repercussions, he was just gonna go. Oh, he knew bam. he had him. That's the thing about an event like that. You don't know who you're about to run into. Even if it's a little guy, you don't know if this guy is loves, can loves brawl. MMA. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean that's what we say with like Sean. Like sure right. Sean, like you saw him, he, that's that guy like that you'd be like drunk at a bar and it would tr- piss you off and be like, You wanna go? You wanna go? And then meanwhile he's like I know every type of like, martial <laughs> art that there is. I'm literally kill you I'm if ten I wanted to. I'm 10 and 0. Yeah. So I don't know if that means anything to you, but turn the fuck around. Yeah, I, I thought know. originally he was on the card as well. What? Um, yeah. Uh, he got he got he did get pushed he, back. He took something that 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 popped off the. Um, I don't I don't know the, the Sada. He, ta- he was talking about it. It's like the 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 agency there. I think he talked about it was like some sort of caffeine type. Yeah. Pill oh, thing that like okay. all the things in the bottle don't show it, but it's, 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 right. you know, it's in there. there. Yeah, yeah. So he's, he's a big advocate for to make sure that, you know, that doesn't happen to anybody else. Cause he, he wouldn't do anything like that. Right. right. He smokes tall chronic, but that's about it. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, he was supposed to be on the card. That's one of the main reasons that we also went, you know, there's like 10% Sean, o, Sean O'Malley, 90% Connor McGregor. I was this far away from him, mind you. Okay. Insane. Um, but yeah, no, the, the the whole experience was was super super good, and I wanted to go because the the time that he fought Floyd Mayweather, I was in Vegas that same day for my buddy's bachelor party, and I could have had two tickets for me and the and the and the groom for eleven hundred bucks, but it would have been no please, and I wouldn't have cared though. And I like I regretted not seeing him in, in person, so I'm like, you know what? If I ever want to see anybody that 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 I want to see live, I'm gonna make everything possible to make sure that that happens. Having said that, and with that said. When do we have uh, Drake or Wu Tang performing out of the esports stadium? Oh, we'll have to talk with Matt and try to see what we can be able to pull off. Yeah. I mean, it, and the fact is, it has have to be a private party, right? <laughs> so, yeah, or, that's or cool. Pack, we, <laughs> so. Yeah, because you know, because the the AT and T stadium is not across the street where where <laughs> yeah, Lady yeah, yeah, Gaga yeah. performs. Yeah. So, <laughs> sure, Drake could sell out if he actually tried. You know. Yeah. No. But easily. 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 That stuff is uh, that stuff is nuts. I I saw about someone the other day. Like, I the last time I was in an actual punching fight. I was in the fourth grade. I've nice. never been in a fight as an adult. I don't know if you guys have. 21 years old. Never. I was in high school. Never? No, just in elementary school. I mean, that's, after that point, I made my, my name known. No one wanted to touch yeah, it. No, that's yeah, it. yeah, that's it. Listen to my voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he actually sounded the he's same like, way in elementary school. <laughs> he's like, he's third like, third grade. Right. 
take this. <laughs> it's a fight's all over, fight's yeah, just over. a bunch of scotch and cigars. That's all I ever had. Yeah, <laughs> no. Nah, nah, 21 and never again. Don't even want to talk about it. It was a violent, violent scenario. Anyway, um, I think that's going to do it for us right now here today at the eSports Stadium in Arlington, Texas. One of the, I don't want to call it the eighth wonder of the world yet because it's not finished. True. But you definitely, if you are in Texas, you may want to stop by and, and check it out. It's a, it's a good experience, especially with with what they're building around the area. Uh, be sure to stop by. If you are into Counter-Strike or if you want to meet some of the Optic people, please uh, be sure to stop by after you eat your turkey, after you have your mashed potatoes. After, Are you going back to home for Thanksgiving? Um, I'll be in St. Lucia, actually. Oh. I'm doing vacation. Hey, whoa. Then. But Where I'll be back. That? You said the 20, Where's St. 24th, Lucia? 25th. 24th November. and 25th. I think I get back on the 24th, so I'll be here for sure. Oh. Cool. So drinks on Wilt when he gets back, for everybody, sure. for all of you out there, come through. Yeah, make come sure you buy him here. Yeah, yeah and we'll buy him here. <laughs> anyway, uh, Don, thank you so much, man. Uh, eSports appreciates what you've done for the last uh, 10, four, 15 four, 14 years. years. 14 yeah. years. Almost 15. Does he update you? Yeah, yeah. hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Hex got the chance to see all my lanyards on the wall. Yeah, so. I did. Then he had like 2004, and I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I know how you are. You're like, can I buy that off you? Like, no, you it's, like, it's like my, mine, mine is a, the earliest one I have. It's like a late 2009 one. Uh, but that's it, yeah. You have a 2004. That's incredible. Anyway, we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you for tuning in. If you guys enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, thumbs up, and uh, some comments down below on some of the topics you'd like us to discuss on the upcoming podcast. We'll see you on the next one. Which one to look at? Goodbye. Peace. Peace.